Now the main quest takes us here. We've already been here. We just secured our very own house in Corvo Bianco. This is locked. The game decided to lock this back up after the main quest. We've already been here though, so we can actually just go on down here. The It has been a week since we meditated, like a whole entire week, so... Um, damn, they spawned back the Kickamore Warriors too? I was gonna say some... So I figured since we already came down here and burned these eggs and stuff, that that would stop these guys from spawning back up. But it looks like, uh, because of the main quest, these guys just get respawned anyway, so... My plan didn't exactly work. I guess the whole week that we were meditating at Corvo Bianco just uh, had to spawn up some enemies again, and these were one of them. <laughs> Agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliche can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. Could have left the door unlatched. What of my privacy? I value it rather deeply. Unmolested, especially by unwanted guests, that's my preferred state. Besides, I knew you'd find a way to get in. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want or even need must matter little. What matters is what Detlaf wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Mm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. Abruxa had taken an interest in it. It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. The hand. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Kobinares' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Oblitera. There's a copy at Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Kovinarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated, so without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Kobinaris gave a rather poetic name, Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Dedloff's hideout. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. And the ornamentation... It comes from our home, where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here, guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans and the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I in turn gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. Can't you just summon Dedloff? You're both hired vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Ah, uh, There is a being who can summon Dedloff. 
possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being, well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of resonance won't be easy. You guess correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's my moon glands, but closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. Rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. Was that a raven? Rather a common sight at this latitude. Very intelligent fowl. I asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned. Him and his brethren. Perhaps they'll find one in the area. And I would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would. With all due respect to your skills, my friend. It will take them some time, nonetheless. So, perhaps you'd care for a snifter of mandrake. Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? Everyone's got some secret. I agree wholeheartedly. I also believe it wise at times to share one's secrets, unburden oneself to those one can trust. This your sophisticated way of asking me if I trust you? I prefer almost always to ask you directly. It seems a test of intelligence, one you just passed. Huh. Maybe you should go first. Reveal one of your secrets. After all, you vampires lead very interesting lives. Anything in particular interest you? Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible, as my presence proves. But, but, I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit, but Triss helped me get it back. Actually, pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living higher vampire's help. However, if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate. Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity is a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Gotta ask you the big question, one everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well-founded? Well, that I do not know. 
We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlef, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. Man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon enjoying my neighbor's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, a Dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back, defeated the wild hunt together. Ooh, seems I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough, but it's a conversation we'll have another time. Need to know more about you now. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say, but I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? Of course I'd be a witcher. Can't be anything else. See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? See, you're determined to get an answer. To find out if I like being a witcher. Just refuse to ask directly, as always. I like being on the path. I like picking up a lead, a trail. I like the tension right before a fight. And nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast. Even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah, not something I think about much, but I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. Ever vigilant, even in his sleep. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. 
No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caraberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. For somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the whites survived entirely unmolested. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... spoons. Spoons? Spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Or perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote. No more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or... Uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. Sorry, Geralt. I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct, and a curse in one place. That a coincidence, or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that White. Uses it in its bruise. Do you imagine the White will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. <laughs> For a moment there, I imagined you asking the White to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were going to make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. All right. Let's take a look at the bestiary. <clears throat> Whites. They say the dead like quiet. I don't know about the dead, but white certainly do. All right, here we go. Whites, necrophage oil, and axi. Now, let's go to the whites lair. We've already actually been there. It's way over here. We could just fast travel straight to it. All right, you guys. We are just here. I wasn't lying. Spoons all over the place. All over the place. So the reason why we didn't come over here before is because the main quest takes us here. Strange. Get a sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm. A message. Trying to tell me something. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Alright, so if we solve this quest, this will also give us the wisdom virtue. What a pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. And there's a bunch of spoons here that we can no um, examine. Shall say to you. 
Whatever lives here treated that literally, still searching for the right spoon. Spoon, pretty ordinary, maybe a little old. All right, spoon key. Spoon key. Sophisticated crafting. Tag bears a description. White's a true collector. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. All right, and we can go ahead and do that quest later once we get to it. Make sure you guys pick up that one spoon. That is the only spoon in here Skeletons. that uh. Doubt they came That's of any, of any interest this to us. Anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It makes sense. All the other spoons we don't no need to look at. Or fang marks, probably choked to death. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Broken neck. Indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. There's a downstairs. Before we go downstairs, let's check this out though. Recorded it in her diary. Poignant. Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. The monster. Journal's author, maybe? Alright, now let's go downstairs. Actually does seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Another spoon. Yep. Just as normal as the last one. Just as normal as the last one. Alright, let's check out over here. Cauldron I was looking for. Why it's not particularly tidy. Greater green mutagen, I'll take that. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. Level 44. Nice. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. Afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Yep, let's go down here first. Look at all these spoons! Thousands of them here. White's been a collector for years. So many spoons. Perfect hiding spot. Alright, so we are going to try to lift the curse. We're not going to attack it. Alright, 
He's like, good soup. That's some good ass soup. What's up, I'm homie? I'm not gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. Tried to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Where none shall sit and dine with you at your table, no spoon you have shall say to you, never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Alright, so the answer here is let's eat not using the spoons. That'll lift the curse. We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you. But there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. That must be so nasty. Keep it down, girl. Don't throw it up. Open your eyes. You need to see your likeness. Let's go chase this sucker down. It's a good thing that we fixed up the house before we did this mission, because all well, you guys are about to see. Should we just... Should we just... Okay, I guess we'll kill these things. Ugly bastard. Can I... Yeah, I can. More of you guys. I wonder if we could actually just run past these guys. There's so many of them, it's a little annoying. Okay. They're all dead. Let's keep it going. There she is. Hello? We are back at our very own house that we fixed up. Looks pretty so good. I took her by the hand and let her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? told me her story on the way here. 
Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again, since she adored feasts. He swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her, and as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Alright, back to our buddy here. Think your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our Codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Pretty helpful creatures. Call on them often? I try not to overdo it, but they can be so useful, as they were now, when I merely needed to be sure I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mention the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement. But, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. All right. So what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Tesha Mudna. What's it like? It is a place of torment. A torture chamber. Long ago, shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. 
Common folk, wearied quickly of living in constant fear, they began to hunt us. Seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Teshem Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage, sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. See no reason to dawdle. Tesham would now take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the raven did me. I've also taken some Sangurium, a solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallant to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. <sighs> Your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. As things stand, the die is cast. <sighs> High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's... Spinning already, and you're... you're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me. 